Hello again, Summer Science students. It's lesson three of week four. We have, including today, three days left of summer school, so that is exciting. Let's try to finish off strong. Okay, just a reminder that all of the quizzes in yellow should be done. These are just from week three, but you should be finishing up every single quiz that is available available to you on GradPoint. Um, if that's not if that's not done yet, please make sure that you're making that a priority because unfortunately at this point you will run out of time. Um, if you're having concerns about that, then please get a hold of me and I'll see what I can do. Okay, so before the next lesson, you need to read living conditions on GradPoint and take the quiz living conditions and you guessed it, it is another one quiz day. There's just one quiz today. So to get to today's lesson, um, you're going to hit unit three, you're going to hit folder one because there's no other choice. And today's lesson's in yellow and yesterday's lesson is in blue. So today we're doing living conditions and you may have noticed that after we do living conditions, we are done with the quizzes. So if we don't have any more quizzes on GradPoint, what are we going to do for Thursday and Friday? Well, we are going to finish any incomplete quizzes. So if you go on to GradPoint, here's a little snapshot or sampling of some quizzes. And I just want to explain what you're looking at so you can figure out what you have to work on um, and what is already done and completed. So if you get a 100 or an 80 and you see a green check mark, that means that you have passed, so you don't need to do anything. If you see a quiz with a black letter that's folded over, or black sheet of paper that's folded over, that means that I moved you forward in that quiz, either because I wanted you to be in the same quiz that we are working on together as a group, or you came in late, or something to that extent. So. If you get a red grade, which is going to be anything 60 and below, but you have a green check mark, that means that you tried two times, you didn't get a score above an 80, but were moved forward in the course. So when I say you finish any incomplete quiz, you're finishing any quiz that doesn't have a green check mark or a black folded over piece of paper. So if this area is empty where there's check marks and little pieces of paper, that means you need to go back and finish that. So feel free to come in on Schoology Conference during your class time. I will still be having Schoology Conference and you can ask any questions. You can ask about your grade. I'll be trying to get your grades up um, on Parent Portal. And if you're done with all the quizzes, and I know that some of you have done a phenomenal, amazing job keeping up. Um, if you're done with all the quizzes and still check in with me on Schoology Conference, I'll give you extra credit. So if for some reason you missed a class or um, you scored really poorly on a quiz, uh, here's your chance to get some points to bump up those, um, I don't want to call them mistakes, but lower grades. All right, ready, study. We're going to do our last grad point summary. Ah! And remember, this is um, just the main points or like the outline of the chapter that we're reading. Okay, so yesterday we talked about population size, and I wanna let you know that populations cannot continue to grow forever, or the population cannot continually increase. That's not gonna happen. A population will increase, but eventually it will hit a number where the population stops increasing. So if we look at this graph, and we're looking at number of individuals on the y-axis that's up and down versus time on the x-axis that's side to side. And you see that the population increases and then it stops and kind of stays the same. And when it starts plateauing or becoming that curve starts becoming flat, we say that that population has hit the carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the largest population that an area can support. So let's talk about like big areas. Let's say we're talking about a state park and I tell you um, this state park cannot hold more than 50 black bears. 
and you're like, huh, okay, well, I, it's a big forest. I thought I could have at least like 100, 200 black bears. But I say, no, once it gets to 50, the population will remain steady. That's the carrying capacity. So why does the population stop increasing? What happens that won't let that population really go past the carrying capacity? Why does it have to be 50 bears? Why can't it be 65 bears? Well, eventually, there may not be enough resources to support a higher number in population. So what do I mean? Um, examples of resources include um, water, food, and space. So if you have too many black bears, there might not be enough water for the black bears. There might, might not be enough food for the black bears. And there might not be enough space to raise babies. And if you don't have water, you don't have food, you're probably going to pass. And if you are passing, you can't go ahead and make more babies. So eventually that population starts to decrease if you run out of resources. So a limiting factor is something that will limit or prevent or stop population growth. Example, water is a limiting factor when there is a drought and a drought is a period of no rain. So these are the things that are going to pump the brakes on the population just exploding in size. So if you have a bunch of plants um, and the plants are happy and healthy, but all of a sudden, you don't have enough rain, then you're going to decrease your population. You're only going to have enough water for a certain number of plants, and that's going to be a limiting factor. That's going to determine how many plants that you can have. Weather is also a limiting factor. For example, if you have a late frost or basically ice that comes you know, late at night or early in the morning that will kill newly sprouted seedlings um, or baby plants, that's what a seedling is, then you're not going to have any baby baby plants for the future. So you might only have plants that are older. So that's an example of weather being a limiting factor. Think about like in the North Pole or in the Arctic, it's very cold. That cold condition might put a limit or a stop to how many organisms that area can support. Another limiting factor is space. So I'm going to start talking about a bird called a gannet. It's like an ocean bird. And if it cannot find room to nest, then space will be considered a limiting factor. Now, these type of birds like to nest on cliffs. And that's a picture of them nesting on a cliff. And you can see that space is very tight. So if you cannot have enough space for all those birds, they're not all going to be able to nest. So your population is going to stay relatively at the same size. Remember, no babies equals no increase in population. Okay, so we're going to stop. We're done with living conditions. I suggest that you rerun, rewind the video um, or go back in the video a few minutes. Watch it one more time. It's not going to hurt you. And then go ahead and take the quiz living conditions. And when you're done and pass with that, you are done for the day, so congrats. You have officially done all of the work. I'm clapping. I don't know if you can hear that on my mic, but you've done all of the work for summer school. I know this was incredibly different this year, but I'm very proud of you guys. Um, again, on Thursday, Friday, check in with me. Just see what's going on. Um, it'll be worth your while because I'll give you extra credit points. And again, great work. It's been a pleasure to teach you. I'm happy to say that you guys are officially eighth graders and I wish you the best of luck for next year. Stay safe, stay healthy for the rest of the summer.